good morning. Welcome to worship service this morning. I'm so glad you're here. Guests and visitors, thank you for being here with us. Those of you who are online, we're so glad you're here. But before I go, I need to say, Pastor Jeff, you sure are able to move down that aisle fast. That's I have noticed the last note. couple times I'm like trying to exactly. keep up with you. Exactly. But you know something? I think it's because you're so excited to be here this morning. Absolutely. It's that and all those years taking my kids to Disneyland. Oh. Where there it's we like, go. come on, come on. <laughs> We have no time for stragglers. Oh, no my time gosh. for stragglers. Well, I tell you what, Disneyland's a great place. Worshiping <laughs> together here is great, too. We're so glad that you're here. I guess it's supposed to get a little warm this week, so that's the way it's supposed to be. So let's thank God for the warmth before we start to wonder how we're going to get out of the cold season. Absolutely. It, uh, great day today, a uh, great weekend, and, and we'll you know, announce some time, of course. But today, not only do we have our ministry fair, I hope you saw it when you came in. Mm -hmm. And just to encourage you to uh, have a chance to walk around today. Look at the different tables to see what's happening, um, including uh, we'll do a ministry table version of the Bible study, uh, just 15 minutes uh, worth of our Bible study. So if you haven't ever come to the adult Bible study, you want to check that out, we'll be doing that too. So just a great opportunity just to kind of see what's going on. Then we have Candy Bar Bingo mm -hmm. this afternoon. Big deal. And a small group activity this afternoon. And we've got the Blessing of the Critters. Blessing of the animals at 2.30. So if you've got uh, an animal you'd like to bring down. So lots of stuff happening. The center, the most important thing today, is right here, right now. As we worship together the living God through the gifts that come to us in Jesus Christ. So welcome. Absolutely. As we begin our service, one of the things that we do in the church is we take a time for confession. And I think maybe outside of the walls of a church, I think that it would be easy to think that what we come here to do is just kind of beat ourselves up for not being good enough and those sorts of things. I mean, I guess I get that. But for me, confession is just about truth telling. Standing up and saying, okay, here's what life is like. Here's what my life is like. Here's how things could be better. And here's what I rejoice in God for. So as we come together for confession this morning, I would encourage you not to see this as a moment for you to be put to shame for the things that you did that you regret. But instead as a moment of truth telling and just an open heart so that we can hear the love of God for us no matter who we are or for no matter what our week has been. And also that little just that little spur in the confession that allows us to consider how things could go better this week. So it is in that spirit that I'd invite you, if you are able, please rise. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. My friends, in Jesus Christ, we have a Lord who knows us and understands the challenges that we face. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find the strength that we need to move forward in faith. Most merciful God, we confess that we often dismiss the faith that lies within us and wander away from the truth. We are quick to use the gifts of creation without care or concern for those yet to come. We often ignore the struggles, loneliness, and vulnerability of others in favor of our own wants and desires. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. God, who is rich in mercy, has revealed his love for us in Jesus Christ, and we no longer stand separated from God, but in Christ we receive forgiveness, and by the Holy Spirit we are strengthened by his presence. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. with you. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I too uh, invite the kids come up for children's time. Come on up. I'll show you why I'm sad. Can I show you? It makes me sad. So I got, I came across this. I'm gonna let everybody kind of maybe see it, maybe not. It might go sideways. I came across this, and it looks like it's a really kind of a neat picture. It looks like there's just all kinds of really kind of fun things. And I was looking at it. Can you see it? Can just lean on it again. I'm out of here so you can see it. Look at that. And yeah, it's missing pieces. And so it's like, it's sad because, I mean, it looks like it'd be really neat, but it's missing pieces. I could make some. Oh, what do you think I need? What do you think I need to kind of make this so I'm not sad anymore? What are you making? A box. A box? No. You know what? Boxes have puzzle pieces in them. Oh my, Lincoln, you are so smart because. There was a box next to it, and I just kind of, it just made me so sad because it had the picture on it, but I knew that, that I didn't have the picture here, and, and you're thinking that inside is going to be the pieces I need? Let me see. Oh, let's see. Okay. Lincoln, you are so smart. Oh, Lincoln. That doesn't look like the right piece. No, you want to put this? I think it goes right there. I think it looks like it's a straight piece. It goes there. Okay, I got other pieces. Okay, this one. 
This one looks tricky. This one looks kind of tricky. I don't know, it's got like an out, maybe over there. You wanna try it? Okay, it might go right there. Let's see. Is that where it goes? No. Yeah. Nice, that's an alligator. Okay, oh, oh. This one looks really tricky. I don't know about this one. Let me try this one. You wanna you want try one? Oh, wait, 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 wait. This looks like it has a snake right there. That might go, you wanna try that one? Why don't you try that one? Whoa! Oh, do you want to try one? Anybody else want to try one? I do. Okay, you already tried one. You want to try one? Okay, this one, that's pretty tricky, but I think you can probably figure out where it goes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay, you want to try one? Anybody else hasn't tried one? Want to try one? You come up? No, you don't want to? Okay, you want that one? Oh, can you figure out where that one might go? Looks pretty good. Yes! That's incredible. We got two pieces left, and I got two puzzle pieces left. Okay. Uh, anybody else want to try one? That hasn't done it. You want to try one? Come on. I want to. Try that one. See if you can figure where that one might go. You are so smart. Yeah, we got one I piece left. One. Anybody yeah. hasn't done it? Want to try one? Can I have one? Can I have one? Well, you did. Did she tell me already? And you got a snake. So you were right. Look at this. This is like the perfect setup. There it is. That's where that one goes. And I tell you what, since you have the snake, you want to do the snake piece right here? Because you got a snake just like that. And there he is. Look! Now we've got this. In, it looks just like this. All we needed was all the pieces. What's that? Yeah, you could, I guess. But that's not what we're going to do. And I think what's very cool is it reminds me that sometimes in church, there's words that are used that are hard. Like, sometimes people say, we need to be of the same mind. We need to have unity. I think to myself, those are big adult words. What do they mean? And then I think to myself, I know what it means. It means that all of us are part of the big picture that God's putting together. And without any of us, the picture isn't complete. So what if, can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? What if we were missing a piece? What do we need? What do we need? We need the peace. And you know, that's how it is with the church. Each and every one of us are a part of the story that God is telling. And together, we make a beautiful picture. We reflect the love of Jesus. So I want you to remember that there's always a place for you and you are an important piece to this puzzle that we call the church and God's love. And without you, without you, well, the puzzle wouldn't just be right. So thanks for being here. Thanks for being an important piece of God's puzzle. And thank you for letting your love shine with others. Would you pray with me? Would you fold your hands and close your eyes and repeat after me? Dear God. Thank you, Thank you that, all of us that all of us are an important piece of the puzzle of love. May I never forget there's a place for me, even if I'm a snake, and it's wrapped around my head. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. Thanks for helping me with my puzzle. Oh, you know what? If you want to. That's the tricky part. Thank you so much for coming up. Well, today uh, we've got uh, two different readings that we're going to share. The first one comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians. And uh, really in this letter is what we're kind of talking with the kids. You know, we're called to be of one mind. We're called for a unity. But that doesn't mean that we're all the same. It simply means that when we come together in the name of Christ, together we are a part of something incredible that we call the love of God. So Paul's going to call his people and thus us 
to unity, and he's going to call us to love. Paul writes, if then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of God, the word of life. I invite you to rise. We sing together a new gospel acclamation. But I think you might think, I'm sorry, Nick, but I think you might remember the tune from your memory banks way back. to the 21st chapter, starting with verse 23. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. <laughs> and he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe in him. The word of God, the word of life. You may be seated.
Well, have you uh, ever heard the expression uh, to turn a blind eye? You ever heard that expression, turn a blind eye? Uh, you know, it means to ignore undesirable information, to pretend that it doesn't exist. That's why I kind of like that photo, right? Kind of like, oh, I didn't hear anything, I didn't see anything. Um, the saying comes, and this is kind of disputed, but, but most people kind of think the saying comes from a 19th century British naval battle. So it was on April the 2nd, 1801. I don't know, some people, there's a whole genre uh, of uh, uh, military artistry and of battles and sea battles and the like, and this is really quite a great example. Uh, it's an example of the Battle of Copenhagen, 1801. The British fleet was attacking the combined navies of Denmark and Norway. The Norwegians probably had it coming, right? Come on! That was for all you Swedes out there. I thought you'd appreciate it. Wow, tough crowd. Okay, nobody had it coming. Well, the, the British fleet was attacking the combined navies of Denmark and Norway. Uh, three British ships had run aground. Two actually aground, one was incapacitated. So the Admiral, Hyde Parker, decided that the cost of the battle was too much. So he sent an order, and, and he was kind of far away out, out, out of the fighting, so he sent an order through signal flags. So you all that were in the armed forces, you know about signal flags, right? Or if you went in scouts, I remember as a scout, remember you're know, learning how to do the ABCs, the signal flags. So he sent the order via signal flags that the younger admiral, Horatio Nelson, should discontinue action and withdraw. Well, when Nelson heard his own signalman relay the order, he pretended not to hear him. Nelson had no intention of obeying the order. Now, Nelson, in a previous battle, had been blinded in one eye. When he was pressed again to acknowledge the senior admiral's order, Nelson held up his telescope to his blind eye and said, I really do not see the signal. <laughs> That's where it comes from. Turn a blind eye. I really can't see what you're talking about. Well, sometimes that's how we are with God. Amen? Sometimes that's how we are with God. We simply find a way to offer a blind eye to who it is that God is calling us to be and willingly continue on just as we please. So today, I think we have a very straightforward question. By whose authority do we live? Or, or maybe another way to ask the question would be, uh, do we recognize Jesus has authority in our lives? This painting is kind of an interesting painting. He's actually a contemporary Russian painter. And um, you probably never heard of him, Andrei Marinov. But it's 2013, so a contemporary parable. But it's very interesting because the figures there are very much, if you know kind of Soviet uh, art, those figures are very kind of, they're kind of harsh and they're kind of hard, which is kind of an, uh, indigenous of Soviet style art. But the father, right, the father figure looks a little bit more Renaissance and a little bit more, uh, you know, um, of a day gone by. So I think it's an interesting piece. But I think the, the question is, do we recognize that Jesus has authority in our lives. And so Jesus tells us a parable to help make it clear about our choices. The parable is pretty clear, if not a bit uncomfortable. There were two kids at home. And the father came to the first and said, go out and work in the vineyard. This child looks at the father and says, I am not going out into the vineyard. Turning back to his game boy and resuming his game. But then, the child goes. The father asks the second child, go out and work in the vineyard. This child smiles and says, oh, I go, sir. But never does. So which of the children obeys the will of the father? The answer 
for everyone is crystal clear. The one who, yeah, the one who went, the one who goes. We all understand that, that actions speak louder than words. But here's what's so startling about the parable. On Wednesday, we talked about, you know, what is a parable? What makes it a parable? And I said, I think what makes something a parable is it allows our defenses to, to go down, right? It allows our defenses to go down, and then Jesus is able to kind of come up with our defenses down and give us the word of God. And this parable asks us, it forces us to ask the same question about ourselves. Which am I? Am I the one who looks good on the outside? Seems to have the appearance of being a good and faithful child of the Father. In fact, I go out of my way to make sure that others realize this about me. But in truth, give little credence to the Father's words? Or am I more like the first child who moans and groans and complains and doesn't like it? Immediately challenges the Father's word. But in the end, submits to the Father's authority and goes as the Father commands. There is an accusation in the parable. There just is. This is towards the end of Matthew's gospel. The parables are getting uh, more challenging and more challenging. That's just the reality of Matthew's gospel. And there is an accusation. It's an accusation that's meant to offer us an opportunity to reflect on who we are, our values, how we live in this world. But here's my struggle. If this is where it ends, then this is really bad news. <laughs> if you just come to church today and have the preacher say, so which one are you? With that pointy finger, right? You kind of walk out and go, oh man, I get treated like this at home. Right? That's bad news. It's bad news because I'm all on my own to kind of react or not. It's bad news because I often don't let the gospel change me. It's bad news because regardless of my motivations, I tend to err. To the vault, not toward change of mind and unity with Christ, not toward God's signaling, but I all too easily can turn a blind and follow the old ways, the old allegiances, the old realities. In theology, we call it the old Adam, the old Eve, the fear that turns me in on myself. So I need some good news. And there is in this parable some amazing words of hope. First and foremost, no one is excluded from the kingdom of God. In this encounter, the religious leaders are told that the others will go ahead of them. These others who have figured it out first, they're in the front of the line. But not that the religious leaders are somehow excluded. Jesus says these others will be first in the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't say you're not coming in. And, and let's take a look at those others who Jesus calls out as having kind of moved to the front. They aren't ideal folks. They've been involved in some rather suspect endeavors. But here's the thing. They've been touched by the Spirit of God. They've encountered Jesus. And in so doing, they found themselves on a new path. The power of the gospel is that it's not given to perfect people. So, I mean, I hate to tell you this, but if you're a perfect person, there's probably a better church for you. And if you doubt me, look up at the preacher. And if you doubt that, turn your head right and left. And you realize we're not perfect people. And the power of the gospel is that it's not given to perfect people, but to those who constantly need a second chance. To those of us who need to hear it over and over and over and over again. 
that we are not defined by our past or our current realities even, but by the future that God never tires of calling us into. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he gives this incredible piece of spiritual advice. Um, we read it. This is uh, uh, verse 12. Got it here for you. Therefore, uh, 12 and 13. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Sometimes, you know, we just might hear these words and let them just kind of drift right over. But I got to highlight this for us today. Read that for me, the highlighted part. Uh, don't read 13. For it is God who is at work in, for it is God. Did you hear that? It's God who might be, who could be, who the jury's not returned yet. No, for it is God who is, is, it's a certainty, for it is God who is at work in, replace that with me, for it is God who is at work in, think about that, it is God who is at work in me, the words of scripture, being a follower of Jesus, being a Christian, can be really hard. It can be really challenging. In fact, I think it's so challenging that oftentimes in churches we kind of try to downplay it, right? We don't want to make anybody feel too uncomfortable. In fact, in today's parable, it can be downright uncomfortable. When the mirror is held up to our face, and yet there's also incredible hope and joy because that's not the final word. The final word belongs to God, and that final word is gospel, and it's good. It is God who is at work in, no, in you. <laughs> it is God. Do you, do you believe that? Do you believe it? It is God who is at work in, it's amazing that God, through the scripture, through the, the gift of community that, that holds me accountable. Through sacred and, and blessed friendships and relationship. God never tires of me or my mistakes or my insincerity. But neither will God allow those things to go unchallenged. I love that. This isn't the pointy finger, right? God never ever tires of me. With all of my mistakes, with all of my insincerity, right? But neither will God allow those things to go unchallenged. And I need that. I need to be forced to ask the question, which one am I? And then I need the promise that through Jesus Christ, God not only confronts, but is with me as I and at work in me as I live into this salvation, in this life. And in the promise of what is to come. See, Paul says you got to work out your, your salvation. And, and for a lot of people, their Lutheran filter comes on all of a sudden. Work out your salvation, right? All he's saying is, you know, you got to work it out. Right? You ever uh, wake up a little arthritic in the shoulder? What do you got to do? You got to kind of work it out. You got to kind of work it out. That's what he's saying. You got to work this out. You've got to work out your salvation. Why? Because salvation is not just in the by and by. Salvation is not just your heavenly reward. That's a part of it. Salvation also happens right here, right now. You are called to live into the kingdom of God right now. And so you've got to work that out. But here's the good news. <laughs> For it is who 
at work in... God bless you, Barbara. Isn't that good news? So as we think about this parable, it can feel like, oh, man. And it does. Because Jesus loves us too much to simply let those things that work against him and the kingdom to not go challenged. He loves you too much. But he doesn't leave us on our own. But it's promised that it is God who is at work in you. That God continues to be at work. Continues to call. Continues to love. Continues to have a place in the kingdom. Even for people like me. And I got to tell you, if I can get in, there's going to be plenty of room for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to invite you, uh, if you are able, to please rise. We sing of our, our hymn of the day, Lord, whose love and humble service. neatest images I was given in seminary, that's the place where you go to learn to become a pastor, took a course in liturgy, which is kind of what we're doing right now, and the litur liturgic professor said this, and I want to share this with you, he said, the liturgy, by doing things the way they've done it for hundreds of years, is a way that we let our grandparents and our great-grandparents have a say in the way that we worship God now. I always loved that. It was a way to let our ancestors in to our worship service. And no place is that more obvious than when we confess our faith using the age-old words of our ancestors in the words of the Apostles' Creed. So now as we gather together, let us confess our faith using these words. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord God, we come together today a grateful people, reminded once again that you are at work in us, and that as difficult as life can be and as challenging as life can be, you have not leave, left us abandoned. We are not stranded. We have your love, and we have your power, and the freedom of your gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, Lord God, we ask that you would use us in humble service to your whole world and your whole community. Where there is strife and difficulty, Lord God, lift up the church. Lord God, we know you are at work within us, so allow us to work together to try and find ways to bring peace and love to a world that seems to oftentimes know only strife and hate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you strengthen local congregations, including this congregation, that our eyes might be open to the needs of those who are around us, whether those needs are people who are struggling from natural disasters or human disasters or just personal trauma. Lord God, be with your church. Strengthen us to believe that you are at work in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we lift up before you all of the ministries of this congregation. We thank you today for our ministry fair and just an opportunity not only for us to see what we do together, but to give us opportunities to serve you and your church in this community. Thank you for Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, God now we lift up before you those who are in need of your healing touch, whether in mind or or in body, or in spirit, those that we now name before you aloud, or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, your Son, and our Savior. Amen. For those of you who are visiting, I'd love to show you something. If you turn around, there is a TV back there. That is what they're seeing at home, on the computer, on phones today, as we have an entire congregation that worships with us online. So as we share the peace, it's our tradition to make certain that we welcome those folks into the liturgy of our church. So let's, maybe on the count of three, wish those of folks who are at home uh, the peace of the Lord. One, two, three. The peace of the Lord. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a few moments and share that peace with one another. God's peace, everybody. God's peace. God's peace, partner. I'm glad you're here. God's peace. Please be seated. You know what, I'm going to be honest with you, I know I shouldn't, but I kind of like new stuff. You know, I just kind of like things to be a little bit different. Right now, more than anything else, I want a new bike. I'm not going to get one, but I just kind of like new things. We've got something new, and I want to show it to you. Pastor Jeff, do you mind if I use your communion packet? Um, we've got these wonderful new communion packets. You know how they work. But this one's a little different because you'll figure it out. 
wafer is on one side and the grape juice is on the other. It looks like an hourglass to me, right? And so today I hope that you enjoy using these uh, new cups and uh, you'll figure it out for yourself. If you don't have one of these for communion, we'd love if you just want to raise your hand. We can make sure that we get one to you. You're welcome to go back. I think we need one right over here. Thank you so much. And uh, everyone's welcome to share in Holy Communion at this congregation. If you come from a different congregation, as Pastor Jeff often says, we all know that Jesus doesn't care. So you are welcome to this holy meal. It's also okay if it's not your practice to commune regularly. It's perfectly okay for you to simply be with us here in spirit. Those of you who are at home, if you would like to join us with bread, wine, grape juice, Whatever it is that you have available, it's, we'd love to have you commune with us as well. What matters the most, at least to me right now, is that you hear God's welcome. God is at work in you, and God delights in sharing God's very life with you. So please know that you are welcome to this holy meal, no matter who you are. And we, would, we are going to uh, take communion together after the words of the Lord's Prayer. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which was given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. This is the body of Christ, which is given for you. And this is the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in grace. Amen. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning today, I just want to take a few moments to remind you of all of the things that you are doing, because that's really what announcements are, right? There are a ton of things that you do as a community to bless this community that we live in. So I just want to lift a few of those things up to you. Of course, you're going to notice that we have our ministry fair, so that's coming up really quick. Please go back, check out all the wonderful things that are happening in the church. And you know something? God is at work in you. There's a lot you can do. You might see some things that you would like to participate in that you didn't even know were happening. So feel free to sign up for those things. I'm told that there is a slide, and I would love, if I could, to uh, be a part of recognizing Emily Carson and Katie Castle, who have both been serving here a lot longer than I have. Emily has been here for 20 years. Katie has been here for 10. 
What an incredible gift that get, they give to the life of this community. And so we take this moment just as a way of recognizing their awesome service. Oh, and there they are. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you do. We're uh, Just a few quick other things, if I could. Visitors, we're so glad that you're here today. I had a chance to say hello to a few of you. And we have bags back here in the back on that table. We'd love to have you take one. It's just fun. Something to remind you of the, the congregation. Maybe a little bit of information about who we are. Hope that you grab one of those. And thank you. It's our honor that you have worshipped with us this morning. Um, so a few things on youth activities. Registration is still open for youth activities. We still have folks coming into confirmation and all of our other programs. No problem. If you have not yet have a chance to register kids for a youth program, please do that. No problem at all. Just go to our webpage, lcrmarion.org. Are you ready for this? I didn't think I'd ever make this announcement in church, but I'm fixing to right now. The high school paintball trip is going to be Sunday, October 15th, leaving at 1130. Paintball, you heard that right. Unfortunately, I'm not able to go to that because I'm going to be talking about the Lord here with Pastor Jeff. But if you or anyone that you love, or maybe some people you've had a little bit of a problem with, <laughs> would like to be a pro part of that, please uh, uh, contact Katie or the church office. That should be a lot of fun. Um, and also our preschool Bible presentation is going to be Sunday, October 22nd at both worship services. I've mentioned the activity fair. Please be a part of that. But today there's a lot of things going on. Candy bar bingo returns. How awesome is that? From 1 to 2, feel free to play. Invite your friends. Just an awesome opportunity to be together. Stick around long enough to stick around and be a part of the blessing of the animals. Bring your other family to church today at 2.30 and have them blessed. Um, trick trunk or treat. I love this. This is another opportunity for us to reach out to our community. It's going to be an afternoon of candy and fun Sunday, October 29th from 4 to 5.30. Invite friends and families. We'll have a bunch of cars out there and it's just kind of go from one trunk to another. It's just a safe way for kids to be able to put on their costumes one more time and enjoy not only friends and family but this wonderful church. Um, you can sign up to host a trunk if you want. Um, you can do that on our webpage and and if you want to, you can feed the candy monster. You'll be able to recognize which one's the candy monster out there. We always need candy. Always need candy. So thank you to everybody who's a part of that. Just a few more, if I could. Uh, Pastor Jeff and I have been talking a long time about a project that we're going to start actually next week. It's going to be at the 300 level, if you know kind of what I'm talking about, in terms of what we're going to be presenting, but it doesn't mean that you need to come prepared. Just become prepared for the, the conversation to be interesting and in-depth. And what we're going to talk about is the evolution of the church. There is this notion, and that's okay, that the church has always been one thing. And it's just always kind of looked the same. But you know and I know that human beings are much more interesting than that. And certainly God is as well. So starting with the Bible and moving through the history of the church, especially in the West to today, we're going to think about all the ways that the church has evolved and the many different ways that the church has expressed itself. Please come and be a part of that. That's going to be from noon to 1.30. New member sessions, you can attend either if you are interested in becoming a, a part of our congregation in a more formal sense. Um, you can do that Sunday, October 22nd at 2 or October 29th at 12. And uh, there is an opportunity to sign up. You can contact the church or let Pastor Jeff know, and that would be an awesome opportunity for us to be together. We are getting ready to host a nationally renowned scholar of Christianity and Christian culture in our congregation. I've known about Diana Butler Bass for a long time. The fact that I can get to meet her and be a part of this is kind of a big deal. And so just want you to know she is going to be coming in November, but we're going to read her books in advance. So on October 28th at 10 o'clock, there's going to be a, uh, a book study on her book, Freeing Jesus. There are some of those books available in the church office. Of course, you can always go grab one from a bookstore for yourself. And that's going to be October 28th at 10 o'clock. And then Diana Butler Bass will be with us at LCR Saturday, November 4th and Sunday, November 5th. And there's going to be all kinds of opportunities to be a part of that conversation. 
Pastor Jeff continues with the Revelation Bible study. Uh, that Sunday's at 9.30. Of course, today it's going to be different. I believe it's 10 o'clock, right? And this is also gives you an opportunity, if you've never been to one of these Bible studies, stop in and just check out and see what it's like. Pastor Jeff will make you laugh. He'll make you cry. He'll change your whole life. And he's going to be able to do that today in about 15 minutes. So, I mean, it's going to be pretty great. Finally, all the things that you are doing for the life of this community, just a few of those ways that God is at work within you truly. Marion Lutheran Church's blood drive is going to be here Thursday, October 19th. Uh, from 2 to 6.30. So if you're interested in participating in that, what a great way to serve your neighbors. Also, a sock and underwear drive. Uh, this helps students in, needs, uh, in need by donating new socks and underwear, which will be distributed at the Marion Cares Trunk or Treat. So if you'd like to participate in that, you can give monetarily for sure, and you can also bring in those things. There's some tubs back there that you can drop them off. There's so many things happening in the life of this church. I should say, though, that also September and October mission envelopes will go to ELCA World Hunger. I could do this all day long. Like legitimately, we could take all day talking about what you are doing and how you are using the gifts of love and Christ who's working within you. I'm personally honored to be a part of a church that does so much. So thank you. Thank you for all you do and thank you for letting me be a part of it. And now I would invite you, if you are able, please rise. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.